Hello everybody, my name is Jimmy Smith and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy portal. Um, this is a session on the southwest of France looking at the Dordogne region and then that sort of more expansive southwest France area. So this is pretty much from the Dordogne River down to the Pyrenees and that big expansive area. It's the uh, most uh, sort of underpopulated part of France, but there is a huge amount of wine regions down here. But for the level three certificate, you don't need to know too much. Um, so we will go through the key areas with some um, annotated maps, uh, a great infographic, um, uh, a Google 3D Earth video, and then a, um, a short written answer question. It's actually a true and false question at the end for this section. If you do have any comments, questions, or concerns, please do get in touch with me uh, either via commenting on the video here on YouTube, or you can get in touch via social media or with the winewithjimmy.com website. Um, so this is part of our free content. We actually do have plenty more content uh, um, exclusive only uh, to our members of the e-learning portal that you can subscribe to on the winewithjimmy.com website. Um, so let's get rocking and rolling. This is not going to be the largest of sections, but still a really fascinating area, um, which is very undiscovered for many people. This is the Volantre Bridge, which is in Cajors. So this is quite a famous site. Um, and Cajors is probably one of the most famous wine styles of this area for certainly for your knowledge anyway. Um, so let's get to having a look at the south. So this is actually the region of the southwest. Uh, so as I mentioned, stretching from around the Dordogne River up here, um, coming all the way down to the Pyrenees. OK, uh, you have the uh, the Garonne River that comes from the south, the Tarn and the Lot, which come from the east and the Dordogne. And they all head pretty much towards the Gironde, uh, the big shipping estuary of Bordeaux. You can see that this is actually a very complex area with many separate, uh, different, weird and wonderful AOCs. Um, so there's quite a lot to look at here, but there is not really that much that is needed to know for the level three certificate. So we'll just focus on really an area of the Dordogne, an area of the Lot, which is Cajos, and then we'll look at uh, the Pyrenees zones, which is Madaran, and Durinçon uh, before we get down towards the Pyrenees Mountains, which are down here. Uh, so this area is set inland a bit more. Um, there's a bit more of a continentality about this area, and we would classify it as uh, as a warm, uh, moderate to warm zone, depending on where we're looking at exactly. And the Pyrenees with Durinçon is is a bit cooler, as one would expect with the mountain ranges just there. But uh, you are not required to know about the exact detail of climatic conditions here for these regions that this is more than likely, I think, going to be found in multiple choice questions, this one, but we're still gonna go through the details with you anyway. Um, so the first area we're looking at is this large orangey expanse, which is uh, overlapping the Dordogne River in the north of the Southwest region. So this is to the east of Bordeaux, and this is a place called Bergerac, uh, which is one of the airports you can fly to of the region. The other is at Bordeaux City uh, itself. So this is Bergerac. And really, if we think about Bordeaux being this large expanse just up here, and I'll draw this in. Let's do this in uh, kind of a blue. Um, so yeah, B Bordeaux's wine region is, of course, is this kind of area all about here. OK, so really, we're looking at an expanse of Bordeaux to its easterly side. And once you understand the geography, that it's located to the east of Bordeaux, it is very easy to remember the grape varieties of this area because they are Bordeaux varieties. So Bergerac, um, the AOCs of Bergerac, um, this area is for reds or whites. Uh, the Bordeaux varieties, of course, are going to be Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc. And then the white varieties will be Sauvignon Blanc Semillon. Now, there are other varieties permitted for the reds and whites here as well, uh, but we are just looking at those basic grape varieties at this level. The wines are good value for money. Um, it's not as maritime here, but it will still have the maritime influences. Uh, and uh, as, as with Bordeaux, it's, it's fairly warm in this area. So um, the ripening is quite easy. Um, and these wines are quite consistent, actually. The Bergerac Rouge does tend to be um, good quality and good value for money. 
so they're the Bordeaux varieties, and that's on the Dordogne River, remember, that meets the Garonne to form the Gironde of Bordeaux. Um, so that is the Bergerac zone. Now, just in the sort of central southern section of Bergerac is a village called Montbaziac. And Montbaziac is um, quite famous for a lovely castle. We'll see that on the video a little bit later. Uh, but here we actually find some wonderful sweet wines being produced. So these are patriotized sweet wines. So therefore the grapes have gone through noble rot at the end of the uh, year uh, and they have concentrated the grape sugars by evaporating water out of the grape. They end up looking like raisins, of course, concentrating its sugars and flavors and acids. Um, this means, of course, we make sweet wines from these grapes, uh, and this is out of Semillon and Sauvignon. Please try and think of um, this area, um, the whole of this Bergerac area, as an extension of Bordeaux. Um, so whereas the Bergerac zone is an extension of the reds and whites of Bordeaux, Montbaziac would be like an extension of the Sauternes or the Barsac, the sweet wines of Bordeaux. Uh, so very good value for money, um, not, as, uh, not as concentrated and complex as the Bordeaux counterparts, but nonetheless, very good value for money, sweet wines made from betriotized grapes in Montbaziac. Um, okay, so that's really the Dordogne area, that's all they wish you to know of this zone. Um, now we're going to head to the southeast of Bergerac, and we hit a river called the Lot River. And this is the region of, uh, or the district of Cajors. Uh, so Cajors, very famous, uh, historically very well loved the wines here. I think it was Henri II which was fascinated with wines of Cajors. And historically, the wines here were called black wines. Uh, and that's because they were, of course, very dark, colorful, tannic, and long lived. They were very much adored, the Cajors black wines of old. As mentioned, it's located on the river Lot, which runs into the Garonne eventually. Um, now, the major grape variety, of course, here is Malbec, as it says, but you will find um, Merlot and Tanat being blended in. Merlot is often the common component to blend into Malbec to make it a bit more accessible, a bit more friendly and earlier drinking. But there generally would be said to be two groups of Cajors wines because it's a fairly largest, largest uh, area. So we have um, some fertile soils certainly around the river area uh, and the plains below the river. And this will produce, in fact, Cajor styles which are more lighter and fragrant, so not in line with the historical style. So you can get some slightly more accessible, friendlier Malbecs from these richer fertile soils, which produce more volume. But the more classic styles, which people tend to know, tend to have enjoyed and link to the old styles are the more powerful tannic and grippy cajors, which are on the slopes of the lot, uh, but also on the higher plateau to the north as well. So this will produce more structured, powerful cajors, which um, often take a long time to develop and soften before being ready to drink. Now, this is the styles we often compare to Argentina to give people a real uh, comparative point to uh, how climate and geology and weather uh, can really impact uh, the, the grape varieties because an Argentinian generic Malbec from Mendoza will often be full-bodied alcoholic but ripe and soft, whereas here in Cajors they will tend to be more grippy, tannic, structured, powerful, dark, uh, and uh, will take a long time to age. So they're often, um, in comparison, if you have the same vintage of a young wine, the Cajors will be more undrinkable than the Argentinian counterpart. Okay, so that is your uh, your Cajor style. Of course, Malbec as a variety is the key grape here. It's probably out of the whole of the Southwest, uh, the, key, the most key grape variety, because it produces this quite distinctive grape variety. And I do just want to mention why Malbec isn't found so much in the Southwest anymore. It was a, an exceedingly widely planted grape variety pre-1956. Um, so that's 
of course, looking at about sort of 60, 70 years ago. Um, what happened in 1956, so this is the winter of 1955, 1956, was an epically cold winter. It was a big, big winter freeze. And this winter freeze lasted for weeks with temperatures below minus 25 degrees Celsius continually for weeks. Malbec does not like those conditions during winter. And in fact, a lot of it was killed off due to this excessive winter freeze. Of course, grape growers would plant with vines that did survive the winter freeze, like Merlot, for instance, and these other varieties like fir. Now they were planted and replanted and Malbec, of course, started to phase out. It is only in Cajors that they made the collective decision to replant with Malbec, despite the fact that Malbec had just been wiped out due to that winter freeze. So it's an interesting area. So that means the vines really are at the oldest around 70 years old in this area, just towards 70 years old. Um, but uh, nonetheless, it produces some really complex styles. Ex expect things like blackberry black cherry, um, black pepper licorice chocolate, uh, sometimes dried fruits in there as well, and some light red fruits, and certainly strawberries and plums on the sort of more fertile landscape of Cahors, making the kind of lighter styles of, um, of Cahors wines. Um, then we have this rather large uh, yellow expanse, which is south of the River Tarn. Um, this is kind of equidistant between the Tarn and the, the, uh, the foothills of the Pyrenees Mountains. Um, so this is close to Toulouse, this is just to the west of Toulouse, and this is the Armagnac region. Uh, but the key one we want you to identify here is the Cote de Gascoigne IGP. So this is an IGP, not an AOC area, so let's just pop that up here. So this is like a country wine, and the key grape variety behind IGP Cote de Gascoigne is Uni Blanc, and Uni Blanc produces these rather light styles uh, that are dry, um, often with a little bit of spritz and some apples. Uh, so you'll find fresh, fairly neutral in style, high acidity, easy drinking white wines being produced in the IGP of Cote de Gascoigne. Then we have uh, to the south of that, so this is um, pretty much, uh, if you head from Toulouse and head towards um, the Basque country, you will um, pass by Madaran. And Madaran, as it goes towards the Pyrenees, is famous for Tanat, very famous for the Tanat variety. Um, so Tanat produces wines that are deeply colored, um, very high in tannin. Its name gives you that sense, right? So Tanat is high in tannin, um, and it will need long, extensive oxidation to really help soften the wines before being drunk. So often the very highest quality Madarans will need a decade of aging. So that's oxidation through oak, but then also bottle aging to help them soften down. Uh, so other grapes can be blended in to do the softening, but Tanat is the famous grape variety here, making very structured, long-lived red wines. And then finally, um, as we're into the foothills of um, the Pyrenees, we have the region of Durasson. And Durasson is uh, a really cool area. It's affected quite a bit uh, by the, um, the Atlantic from the Bay of Biscay. So you'll find, in fact, there are effects this way. So you have wet weather, cooler conditions because of high altitude. Um, so really, it's a principal area for white grape varieties. And our principal grape variety here is Petit Manseng. And Petit Manseng makes dry, too sweet uh, examples. Uh, so you'll find, in fact, some of the greatest sweet wines here are majority Petit Manseng. There is another variety called Gros Manseng, the bigger Manseng, whereas Petit Manseng means small. And that's often blended with Petit Manseng for Durinson Sec. So Durinson Sec is dry. Durinson Du is your sweet, often made by Petit Manseng. And the sweet wines will be made from not patriotized fruit normally, but from passillerage. And passillerage is the um, drying on the vine. So leaving a later harvest on the vine. We'll talk through that in a second. The wines will go through um, to produce a style which is pronounced apricot, passion fruit, grapefruit, 
and sometimes with hints of oak as well. They really are um, aromatically floral and fragrant, gorgeously acidic sweet wines. They are very drinkable sweet wines, the Duran Son Du, made from Petit Manseng. So let's just go through this herb that I mentioned, which is called Passelerage. Now, Passelerage, um, we've talked about botrytis on this session and on other sessions previously. But what is Passelerage? So botrytis is a fungal mold that affects the skin of the grape, evaporating water and thus concentrating the sugars uh, and the acidities. Passelerage is not a fungal mold. This is actually drying the grapes on the vine. So this is uh, drying it at a stage where uh, basically the vine has matured the grapes as much as it can. Uh, and at a certain point, the grapes will start to dehydrate. OK, and they start to um, they start to sort of dry up a bit. So this needs to happen in areas where it has dry and warm autumns. Um, and here in Johansson, there are some good dry conditions. It still could be a little bit wet, though, but um, it still means that Passelerage is possible. If it was uh, sort of wet and warm autumns, that would be much more conditions for Botrytis. But dry and warm autumns are very good for good aeration, dry aerations to really desiccate the grapes on the vine. So that's drying the grapes on the vine. So the grapes dehydrate when they are fully ripe, turning into sort of raisins, semi-dried raisins, I suppose you would say at this point. This increases, of course, the sugar concentration and acid within the grapes. Uh, in fact, acids may drop off a little bit. Sugars are concentrated, though. This creates overripe notes, very tropical dried fruit characteristics. We mentioned these dried apricots, um, passion fruit, uh, and so on. Um, it adds a bit of body and texture to it as well, uh, and this is really because of that in increase of sugar concentration. Uh, and these can sometimes be labelled as late harvest here in Jurançon, as well as other parts of um, uh, of the of France. Uh, in French, that will be vendange tardive, and I'll scribble that down for you just here, so you're okay with that term terminology. Vendange tardive. Oops. Uh, beef. Okay, so late harvest styles. Okay, um, let's have a quick look at this video. Um, I need to, uh, I do need to get the um, the password for you. Here we go. Let's pop this just here. Okay, so I want to get, give you a feeling for this area. So let's have a look at a Google Earth 3D video that we have created for you. So there we go. We're looking at uh, the southwest of France, Aquitaine region, and uh, the southwest France region. This is a very underpopulated part of France, the most. Um, and here we're going to focus, first of all, in the Dordogne area. There is the Dordogne River running from uh, east to west. Uh, and here we are looking at some of the Bergerac vineyards. OK, so these are vineyards full of Bordeaux varieties, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, making red wines, but also white wines. So Bergerac Blanc made from Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon. They're good quality, affordable examples of a, a Bordeaux style. Then we have the Montbaziac, which produces botrytized sweet wines from Sauvignon and Semillon. There is, in fact, Chateau de Montbaziac. So these are the wonderful sweet wines of the area produced via botrytis, the fungal mold that evaporates the water out of the grape, concentrating sugars and acids and flavors. Then we come down here to the, uh, the bridge, the Volontre Bridge, Pont Volontre of Carros. And we're just looking at some of the Carros vineyards, first of all, on the steeper slopes. Um, so these were, we'll find some very good quality Cajos wines, hence where they got their original name of black wines, very dark in colour, made from Malbec, with big tannic structure and intense ripe concentration, often with toasty new oak. But remember, a fertile part of Cajos, uh, certainly around the flatter landscapes, will produce slightly simpler. That is the Pont Volontre, so this is the Volontre Bridge, um, which is the beautiful part that crosses the river lot here in Cajos. So wonderful, wonderful bridge. So that is your Cajos, the place, as we just listed. 
Next, we're going to go down and head towards the um, Pyrenees. Um, so this is our real southern part of the southwest, where first of all, before we get to the foothills, we have Madaran. So this is, remember, sort of equidistant between Toulouse and the Basque country. In Madaran, it's famous for tanat, making a very complex tannic long-lived reds in this zone of Madiran. And then the final one we'll look at, remember, we're going into the foothills of the Pyrenees. You can start to see it gets quite mountainous here. And this is Durançon. And Durançon, um, very sporadic landscape, vineyards dotted around on slopes with good aeration here. And remember, dry and sweet wines here made from Petit Manseng. Um, the sweet wines, the Durançon du, will be made via passelage, late harvest, leaving the grapes on the vine for a little bit longer. Splendid. So let's just do a few true or false questions on this one because there's not a great amount of content that I can really form written questions out of. So Montbaziac makes sweet wines mainly from Botrytis. True or false? So we've actually learned about, in this area, two types of sweet wines. Montbasiliac is indeed the one that we make from Botrytis. So that is the fungal mold, which evaporates water, thus concentrating grape sugars, acidities, and flavors. They'll be picked as very sort of hairy, moldy raisins, and then, of course, pressed with very big concentration behind them. Durançon makes sweet wines mainly from Botrytis. Is that true? or false. We've just learned that that is, of course, false. Durançon makes sweet wines mainly from passelage, that is leaving the, vi uh, the grapes on the vine longer uh, to um, start to ripen and dry, but not with the fungal mold. So Durançon has a, an autumn which is a bit drier and warm, whereas Montbasiliac really has um, a, a, an autumn which is a bit wetter and warm, hence why it has that botrytis. Madaran is made mainly from Malbec. So no, that is not true. We have just learned that Madaran is made from Tanat, the grape variety that makes very tannic structured long live wines. And Madaran is down towards the Pyrenees. Uh, Durançon is made mainly from Petit Manseng. Well, I mentioned a couple of the Mansengs, both Petit and Gros Manseng, but yes, Germanson is made from a lot of Petit Manseng, what you need to know anyway. Um, you could argue that it's made from Gros as much as Petit Manseng, but that's not in your textbooks. You need to relate Petit Manseng to Germanson. Okay. Madaran wines were historically called black wines. Uh, so we talked about this earlier, but not for Madaran. We talked about it for Cahors because of Malbec's very dark, um, very pigmented skins, making these very dark and powerful tannic wines. So Cahors was well known for black wines. Bergerac makes only red wines from the Bordeaux varieties. Now we know that Bergerac is just to the east of Bordeaux. So we know that the Bordeaux varieties are correct. Yes, they are made from Bordeaux varieties, but Bergerac also makes white wines from the Bordeaux varieties. So this is actually false. So you'll find Bergerac Blanc is made from Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon. And then uh, your uh, Bergerac Rouge is made from Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot and Cabernet Franc mainly. Montbasiac is made from Semillon and Sauvignon Blanc. So Montbasiac, as we, we learned earlier at the top of this list, makes sweet wines from Botrytis. It's quite close to Bordeaux. Uh, it's just to the east. So therefore, this is true. It does make sweet wines from Semillon and Sauvignon. Cote de Gascoigne is an AOC. Everything we've learned in this section is an AOC apart from Cote de Gascoigne. Cote de Gascoigne is an IGP, a country wine area. The, the, the level of quality below an AOC. Remember that the Cote de Gascoigne is famous for Uni Blanc, making very dry, acidic, fresh white wines. 
And there we go. Code to Gascoigne is made mainly from Uni Blanc. This is true. The same grape variety that uh, goes into making Armagnac. And it's exactly genetically identical to Trebbiano from the north of Italy. There are many Trebbianos, but Trebbiano de Suave, for instance. And Madaran is located on the river Lot. This is false. It is Cajos, which is located on the river Lot. Okay, so I hope you have found this section useful for your studies. It only really is uh, about a page of your textbook, so it's not a great amount. Um, but there's a few bits of information in there to help you understand. So I've been uh, Jimmy Smith of Wine with Jimmy. Once again, if you have any comments, questions or concerns, please put them in the comments section uh, below this video on YouTube. Get in touch with me via social media all listed there on or on every slide that we've gone through. Or get in touch via the website winewithjimmy.com on our contact part. But uh, thank you so much for your time and attention. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye. For